training at home for beginners. This is a basic level. We're gonna start with a simple warm up. We will do some intermediate things in this class. If you've been training for a while, maybe you'll pick up a couple new things. If not, let me know in the comments what you wanna work on and I will make you a video. You're just gonna turn this in your hand from side to side and you're learning how to fight with sticks. You need to build basic strength, flexibility, mobility in all your muscle, all your joints. This is gonna help you get there. Turning your staff from side to side like this is gonna build a lot of strength here while it gets blood to flow into the joints, which lubricates them, keeps them safe from injury, but it's also activating all the muscle in the forearms, in the upper arm, in the shoulder even. It's gonna force you to engage the core muscle, making you stronger for self-defense. You learn how to fight with sticks, bow staff training at home for beginners. Always start with a good, simple, basic warm up. After you do this for 30 seconds in each hand, you're gonna to start to go from one hand to the other. And you're gonna take it like this. Your pinkies come together, your palms are facing one direction, facing up. And you're gonna turn out from side to side. You're gonna do this first in front of your body for 30 seconds. And then you're gonna lift your hand simply above your head. And you're gonna do the exact same thing Going side to side, the pinkies come together, palms are facing the same direction, in this case, behind you. Just going side to side, building more muscle, more strength, more control in your forearms, in your grip. You're gonna get a stronger grip. You can see that's the same motion and you just do it in front of your body. Then you're going to start with a figure eight spin. The basic angles using your collie sticks or your Eskrima sticks and then build off of that. I'll make you some videos if you want to do more detail in Eskrima, Arnis, Kali. But one weapon also will help you get better at other weapons. So using the bow staff or the bow makes you better at other styles too. Now. All you're doing with this figure eight is making a side to side figure eight, carving this infinity sign. And you're gonna do it with one hand first, and then I want you to try to put the other hand on it so that they're facing opposite directions and continue with that same spin. You're gonna feel this is a challenge to your flexibility a little bit, which is why I'm having you do it. You're gonna grow this way. And then separate your hands and do the same thing, turning from one side to the other side, just with the two hands and feel how that stretches out your shoulders a little bit more. Bring your hands closer together, take one hand off, put one hand on, separate the hands and just get a feel for how your body moves in those three different positions. Now, after you've done one hand, put in the other hand, same thing, 30 seconds here. With this hand on it, you put two. Open your hands, and you can see I have one foot in front of the other one. You're gonna do that with the same side that's forward in the forward spin is your left hand put your left foot forward put two hands on it and then open them up and you can see as you bring it from one side to the other it doesn't it's not going to turn unless you open your hand but don't take your hand off of it teach yourself how it will move and how it won't move 
get that other hand off again. And that's one of the best ways that you're going to learn what this thing can do and what you can do with it is to change your position, try different things while you're doing it. Now, from this position, I want you to go from one side to the other side, still in that forward figure eight motion. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. You're going to take your time. Your pinkies come together. Your palms are facing up. From one side to the other one. In this case, you can switch your feet. You can jog in place. If you want to get your heart rate up, make this more of a calorie burning workout. You can take a couple steps forward, a couple steps back, stepping forward, stepping back. And you can see how that's going to increase the speed of your spin when you start to get your feet moving under your body and slow it back down. Try changing how high you're holding your stick. If you're up here with your staff or how low you can go before you hit the deck, you hit the floor, bring it through the middle, bring it up, bring it down from the side. It looks like this. You're going just forward, backward, forward, bring it higher, bring it in the middle, bring it down toward the ground but also teach yourself or train yourself to get out of the comfort zone. If you've been doing this for a while, you're used to doing it in one level or one plane or one area, challenge yourself, get it higher, get it lower. You can do that turning warm up to the side. You can do figure eights to the side of your body. Pushing this way, you can do the figure eight. Well, just found the ceiling. Do them higher, do them lower, but make some little variations like that in your training today as you learn how to fight with sticks. Bow staff training at home for beginners. Like I said, we'll do some intermediate. All of these progressions are really of an intermediate nature. So just by changing where the stick is, down here under your waist, or here in front of your chest, or here close to your face. And if you're outside, go up to the ceiling. You can go above your head with a lot of these same moves. You can start to bring it from side to side. You can add palm rolls over your head and start to build your confidence with getting it over your head. The palm roll is just opening your hand here. Your fingers just open like you're feeding a cube of sugar to a horse. If you have never done it, you don't want to hold it like this or an apple because he'll take your fingers off. So you always give a flat palm and then they'll take it off like that. This is the same thing. If you leave your fingers up, it won't go through. It'll get stuck. It'll fall and hit yourself in the head. And if you're using one of these self-defense bows made out of hickory like this one, it's the first link below. You want to see what the dimensions are. It hurts when you hit yourself in the head, which is good. It should hurt. You'll learn faster that way. Every time you whack yourself with your weapon in the head or in the ankle, you'll get it in the calf sometimes. Sometimes you whack your knee or your shin. I just jab my toe, you know, wearing shoes. You feel it and then you learn, oh, sh don't do that again. You will, you will do it again, but you'll do it less often. See how many times you can palm spin it over your head. You might need to pay attention to what you're doing a little bit but you'll get there. Just mess around with a little bit. Make these small variations to increase your level of ability, your level of um, aptitude. Now, we've done this forward figure eight spinning. I want you to reverse it, pulling it up and out. Where before I said you're turning, carving with your thumb, this time you're gonna be carving with your pinky side, pulling backward from side to side, stomach up and in, abs tight. This is your right hand, put your right foot forward. Make your body a smaller target, easier to get around. Do that for 30 seconds. And then when you change, it's still pinky to pinky, palms facing the sky, but it's gonna come in front. You're going side to side, pulling it up and over, pull your stomach up and in. Anytime you wanna go faster, get your stomach tight. Drop your chin, get your other hand up, 
Don't let it hang down there. You're gonna whack yourself. Bring it up. Go higher, go lower. And the whole time, keep your hand closed. None of this, don't open that hand. You wanna keep it closed and force yourself to grow in flexibility and mobility and your ability to move this thing around your body. Once you've done that 30 seconds on each side, go to the hand to hand switch where it's a continuous figure eight motion. And just like the other one, if you want, you can get the other hand in there. And now you're doing two handed spin. Separate those hands. Oh, it doesn't want to go. There it is. Separate the hands and figure out how you can make it move. Get your hands back together and then take it off. Discovery, self-discovery. Learn about how your body moves and how your staff is gonna move. Your staff is gonna become an extension of yourself. This is gonna become an extension of your body, your heart, your mind, your soul, right? Only when you try new things and look silly and make mistakes and hit yourself. Uh, hey, it's Doug from Canada. Hello, Doug. Hello to everybody else. Sorry I didn't say hi. I wanted to give you a lot of value as we get started and not respond to the comments as much, but I do like the comments, so please keep them coming. One way to be sure that I see your question is to put it in the comment section below in addition to the chat. But you're going hand to hand, and again, you start moving your feet, just like before, jog in place, or go for a run around the neighborhood, around the park. What will people think when they see you with your staff running around spinning it? Who cares what they think? Really, who cares? I don't care. Get your ego out of the way. Probably what I've found is that people, for the most part, are envious. And people who have a negative opinion of you, you don't have to live their life. They don't live your life. The fact that they have such strong opinions about other people kind of makes them sad and pathetic. So don't worry about what they think. Do what's good for you. Do what makes your heart sing. Then, after you've done this in front of your body from hand to hand, like I said, maybe go to the side of your body. Right? One side, and then... See that? I almost hit myself. That's what you want. The other side. That means you're growing. And then the other side. Now watch this. Now you have enough skill to start weeding them together. Start putting some things together. So you're going to go from one hand and you're going to let it turn pinky up. Take it with the other hand. Thumb down into a forward spin over here. When it goes in front of your body, it has to change directions in the spin. But it doesn't stop spinning. In other words, the staff continues to spin. It's your hands that will be different because you've got a right hand and a left hand. Uh, thank you, Manfred. I appreciate that. Manfred said, thanks for the lecture. I don't mean to lecture. It just occurs to me that we think of, we care too much about what other people think. Yeah, Doug said years ago he broke his toe trying to bounce his staff off the con concrete. Yes, we do that to ourselves, don't we, Doug? Now, this is the forward spin. I bring it back in front of my body, pinky to pinky, palms up, and it goes immediately into a reverse spin. Like I said, the staff doesn't stop. It's that you have a right and a left hand, and they don't, they don't go 360 around your hand. If you're a Lego creature character. My son plays with the Legos in the morning. I was looking at his little Lego guys. The hands go 360 because they're a plastic toy. But since you're not, you gotta just keep it moving. Regards from Germany, Manfred says. Thank you, Manfred. I'm going to say gracias, but that's uh, Spanish. It's funny, my, my German's popped out of my head. I'm thinking it was chus, which means see you later. Bespeita. Bring it over the top. Danke schön. There we go. Danke. Feeling dunk. Bring it this way from side to side. Now your one hand and the other one. Now I want you to stick it behind your back. Start with your right hand, go behind your back, and when you're back there, you're just taking it under and you pull it out. Then you go back, your right hand is gonna come under the left to pull it out. You can see me in the mirror. My left hand comes under the right, pull it out. 
Right hand comes to the left, pull it out, then whip it up over your head, turn it. Pinky to pinky, palms face the same direction. Go back out, behind the back, over the head, behind the back, over the head. Now, one word about self-defense using, especially this. This is a self-defense. Obrigado is uh, Portuguese. Thank you. Obrigado. I like that. My hand is here. For self-defense, there are two basic ways, three ways you're going to carry it. You're walking down the street, you're walking in the woods, you're using it as a hiking staff or a walking stick. It's either going to be in front of your body as you take a step forward, or it's going to be behind the front of your body in your backhand as you take a step forward with the opposite side. Or you can be carrying it like this. It's a long pole. If you're carrying it in your hand and it's in the front hand as you take a step, you're going to point your thumb. Uh, how long does it take to harden the skin inside the hands to avoid blisters? I think everybody's different. Drink a lot of water. That's my first tip because you'll heal faster. Eat a lot of vitamin C because vitamin C helps cut or heal cuts and bruises. That's going to help your skin heal faster and get the callus. I won't, <laughs> I won't tell you the thing that my father always told me as a kid and I would get blisters. Well, I will tell you. He said, pee on your hands. I don't think that works. I don't know if that does or not. I do know salt water helps to get the callus a little bit faster, but um, I, I don't know. I think everybody's a little bit different. The callus is, I, the only thing I will promise you is they will go away, the, not the calluses, the blisters, and you will get calluses. And then after a while, uh, player Patrick says, hello from Prague, hello Patrick. After a while you'll have nothing but these and then very rarely will you get blisters. You'll have mostly calluses. So if it's in your front hand, you're gonna point it and thrust right through his face for self-defense, right? Let's say the threat is here, I'm walking, gets in front of my body, he comes up on me fast, I just pop it like that. I'm just throwing my thumb forward and it's gonna push it into my back hand. Two hands, thrust, strike, strike, go through him, change hand position, strike this way. You're gonna learn how to do that the more you practice, but the basic idea for self-defense is you stand behind it, you point the thumb, and you stop his advance by thrusting right through his face. Now from here, the back hand punches, bringing it across his chin. The front hand comes back down, chopping like you're chopping a tree. Yeah, uh, P has a lot of salt urine, has a lot of salt urea, um, which helps with uh, the callus. You're right. Uh, my father was right. It just, I, it was such a common thing because I grew up working physically with my father. He always, he was a laborer and he had a business doing uh, subcontract work and we did a lot of physical things and I often got uh, blisters. And if any time I would wince or I would look at it to make sure my skin was still there, which it wasn't, to make, you know, because when you're a kid, you're like, oh, I'm just never going to grow back. He would say something not very kind or loving. He would say things like a father would. And it'd say, just pee on your hands. So you could use a different word. And that'll take care of it. And like a good son who listens to his father, I did it. And now I've got a lot of good calluses. But I'm not saying that's right. I don't know the science behind it. Although you're right, salt and urea. So I'm going to pop it in the back hand, thrust, punch in the back hand, strike through here. You can also step and thrust with two hands like you're doing a push-up. It's very effective it's if, if it's in your back hand. So you're walking. And then the opposite foot comes forward, which puts it behind the front of your body. Now you're exposed. You're going to lift and get it in front of your body. As you lift with your back hand, like you're putting your helmet on or putting your phone to your ear, the front hand is now in front. You're going to thrust, strike coming down. From here, you can bring this one through in that horizontal uh, strike. So it comes up here. This is also an intercepting blocking motion. So I'm going to block him, thrust through his face for self-defense, chop to the neck, come across the head, and then pushing right here. Uh, pocket staff is garbage. Do not spend your money on a pocket staff. That is really a, um, it's based on an expandable wand for a magician. So it's very thin uh, aluminum or very thin metal. I don't think it's even aluminum. I think it's a, like a, a rolled steel or something. And it's so thin that the first time you spin it, it's going to come apart and break. 
And then if you try to hit something against it, it's so light, it has no power, and it will collapse and break. And it's gonna cut you in your hand because it's that thin, cheap metal. And it's Chinese garbage that people lie about and say, pocket staff, expandable, self-defense. They even say self-defense, even though they know it's a pure lie. And the most you're gonna have is a, um, a magic wand trick. You're gonna have a trick staff, and the first time you try to use it, you're gonna be so upset, and you will have wasted your 20, 30 bucks, or 15 bucks, or whatever it is you can find it for. It's Chinese garbage. So don't buy one of those little metal things, and there's a little pin on the end, and you pop it out, and it comes out, and it's, and it's long. It, it, it looks like it, and then the first time you try to use it, you're like, oh, this is garbage. So waste, or don't waste your money. Save your money. Do not buy an expandable pocket staff. Now that's not the same thing, if, like Karate Mart, KarateMart.com, all one, KarateMart.com, they make an expandable baton staff, which is a little bit different. And then I, I'll, I'll do another video on a two-piece staff that you can get, which is another option. But if it's this big and it goes in your pocket and you see it, you know, on Instagram, they sell a lot, or TikTok, or you see it, they, they keep coming around, don't buy it, it's garbage. I got one, someone sent it to me, asking me to please make a video so he could sell a lot and put his link in there. And I got it and I was gonna make a, a video, but I honestly, I just called him up and said, or emailed him and said, this is garbage, I'm not gonna endorse it, but I'm not gonna burn you on your, your thing, but you shouldn't sell it. So that's my opinion. I almost made it, maybe one day I'll get one and I'll show you what a piece of garbage it is. All right, I wanna go back to self-defense. The third way you might carry it in your hand here, you would either turn your palm up and then you could strike very quickly or you would turn your palm down and now you're in a push-up grip and you could strike to the knees you have spinning blocks all kinds of cool things that you could do if you carry it like this in your hand but that's for self-defense and again this is a self-defense bow that means this is very heavy you can hear it's a little bit more dense it's made out of hickory if you want to see what the dimensions are click the first link below to see what one of these are, but, and these last forever. It's, it's uh, an investment. Um, yeah, cold steels, lino staff, sticks and canes. Steve says he likes them. Yeah, those are all great. They're all heavy. Um, it's a good workout. You can build your, your forearm up, but they are really good for self-defense and almost un unbreakable. I don't even know if you can break them. You probably have to drive over them with a car, you know, do a whole thing, take a chainsaw, but cold steel, those are great. All right, so from here, I want you to practice a wrist roll going over. I keep waiting to whack myself in the face. I like when I do that because I want you to see that I still make tons of mistakes. I lose my focus. Somebody walked by trying to look at the same time and then I hit myself. That's good. That's good feedback. That means pay attention. Pay attention you're gonna hit yourself, which is what self-defense training should be about. Paying attention. Situational awareness is number one. Don't get on your phone Put your phone in your pocket when you go outside, unless you need to talk to somebody, but look straight ahead. Don't look down like this all day. So you're just opening your hand. As you turn your hand out, you open it, and then the pinky side is facing up, and it's gonna roll. So you open the hand, and as the staff rolls, you roll your hand back. Roll your hand back and bring it around. Yeah, Doug says no pain, no gain. Yeah, you're exactly right. And another way to think about it, is if you don't challenge yourself, you'll never grow. You never grow in your comfort zone. So you gotta get out of your comfort zone. You either have to move faster, more intense, use, or more complex. There are three things you have to do. Either go harder, go with more focus, like really pay attention, or make it more complex. Try something different. And then when you start dropping your staff or hitting yourself, then you know you're growing. But if you never drop your staff, you get so good, you don't drop it, you're not really getting better at that point, you level off. And it's just that you got good enough not to drop it. And you're chickening out. You're not pushing yourself to go even better and harder and faster or more complex. Maybe it's just a harder technique that you need to learn. But do this, go over the backs of your hand. Again, as, so this is the thumb side. As it comes up, your thumb opens and then you just allow it to roll. As it comes up, your pinky opens, but then you have to roll your hand back over, right? It comes up, open, comes up, open, and roll it back. 
from one side to the other side. Then, once you get that, go from side to side and go back into your figure eight and add those wrist rolls in. When it's on the same side of your body, this is my right hand, when it's on my right side, I go over the pinky side. When it's on my opposite, the left side of my body, I go over my thumb side. So practice that's gonna increase your skill level. This is more intermediate. Or intermediate. I know this is uh, how, to, how to fight with sticks or stick fighting. Bow staff training at home for beginners. But I know a lot of you are not beginners. A lot of you aren't even intermediate. There are a lot of advanced members here. But somebody who's advanced is just someone who can do the basics really well. And some advanced stuff. It takes both. If you want to get to the advanced skills, you've got to master the basics. Maybe I should have said it that way. You need both, right? No platitudes, just growth. So you've gone side to side. And then weave it together. Do your two hands. Throw in a wrist roll or two. And then weave it together again. Maybe throw in your finger rolls. You can do a lot of different things, but those are the basics. Um, thank you. It said it was really good, uh, and the wrist rolls are faster, smooth. It's just from practice. You're going to get better than I am. I promise you that. You keep moving. You keep doing it. You keep training like that. You're going to be a lot better than I am, especially if you're paying more attention than I am. And this has been my philosophy for life. I've had some brilliant, amazing martial arts instructors and self-defense instructors, not just martial arts, but self-defense in both civilian world and the military world. And one thing I know for sure, I've always felt that if they could do it, I could do it. There's, there's nothing that Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, Chuck Norris, any of the old greats, Muhammad Ali, any of the new greats, uh, Tyson Fury, that Colin dude with the tattoo, McGregor, if they can do it, you can do it, right? If uh, Ip Man can do something, if, if uh, I don't know, who's, who's the other one? Adkins and Michael Jai White, if any of those guys can do things, you can do it. And it doesn't even have to be in martial arts, whatever it is that you have a passion for. All I'm doing here is I'm going through the fingers. Hello, Kachu, it's good to see you. Thank you, Shantae, I really appreciate it. You're being here. So didn't think I could catch it live. Paula's natural. Got a live stream. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Paula. Scott Adkins. Yeah, there we go. Just going through the fingers. You're just adding skill upon skill upon skill. And all of these skills will make you better at controlling the staff, holding on to the staff. When you learn how to fight with sticks, bow staff training at home, you need strong, healthy forearm wrists, and it's a gradual process. Allow yourself to grow slowly and consistently. You might not get it yet, but say, I don't have it yet. Never say you can't. You say, I can't yet. I haven't yet. I don't know how yet. I can't afford it yet. I haven't made time for it yet. Throw in the power of the word yet, and that leaves your brain open to learn and challenge and grow and change. Throw it behind the body, bring it over to the head, Bring it back to the other side, bring it to the front of the body, throw in some wrist rolls, do your freestyle, hit the ceiling, learn some things. Every time you start to speed it up a little bit, you increase the chance of hitting yourself and or dropping it. So do that, drop it, and then allow yourself to grow. You guys have been awesome. I have to go take care of a couple things, but I'll be back later today. Thank you so much for being here. Keep training.